welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. It's the Monday broadcast, and if you happen to be listening to this broadcast on its regularly set time to go on air, then you know what day it is. It's tax day. I pray that your taxes are done, paid up, and uh, hopefully maybe you'll get something back. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, friend, thanks for listening in today. Right now, my Bible sits open to the book of Romans, Romans in chapter 2. If it's all possible, get your Bible out and join me there. Get something on which you can jot some notes, please. We try to make a clear outline as we study God's Word together, and we've got one for you today. I also have a gospel tract in my hand. Do you know what a gospel tract is? Now, this radio program, Bible Tract Echoes, is about studying the Word of God to strengthen our lives so that we can be more effective in giving out the gospel to do the work of evangelism. And gospel tracts are an evangelism tool. I want to give you some free gospel tools here. My announcer will tell you how. I'm going to highlight one of them. But right now, let me lead into our Bible study time this way. If you have been active in sharing the gospel of grace for very long at all, you quickly discover this fact. Not every person you talk to is starting from the same point. Now, some people are open and deliberate in their sin actions, and they know they're sinners. Well, others, though, are very moral and religious people. And typically, these folk will say that they have sinned, okay, but they just don't see themselves as being that bad or that wicked a person. These morally upstanding people are much harder to witness to than the first people. As the old saying has been said often, before you can get a person saved, you first got to get them lost. Well, take heart, friend. Jesus also dealt with very moral people. The rich young ruler and Nicodemus were religious, moral people. Jesus did not see all of these people to whom he talked to come to faith in Christ. The apostle Paul was once one of these moral, religious people. He did come to Christ. In our passage today, Paul begins to write about moral people. And guess what he says? He's going to say that these are guilty people, guilty before God, ready for the wrath of God. Let me show you. Get your Bible and join me, please. Romans chapter 2. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. We have a sample packet I want to give to you. There's 40 tracts in that sample packet, and the sample packet is absolutely free of charge. For 81 years, we have been giving away gospel tracts all over the world in different languages. We pay the shipping and everything. We want to give God's workers the tools to help them be more effective and be broader in their evangelism efforts. The particular gospel tract in my hand right now now is entitled Charge It with a question mark. Charge It, it is the size of a credit card by design. Everybody knows what a credit card does. You go purchase something, you give your charge card, the purchase price is put onto your account. Well, that's what Jesus did when he died on the cross. Our sins were charged to him. He paid our debt, and his righteousness was put to our account when we by faith receive him. By the way, morally religious people that we're going to talk about today, they don't think that their sin was so bad that somebody had to pay for it. They can do it themselves. They can pay for their own sin by just being morally upstanding and being very religious. The backside of this simple gospel credit card track is the simple plan of salvation with the Bible verses that will clearly laid out that Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. Please, 
I want to give you some gospel tools. They're gospel tracks. Let me do that. Be ready when my announcer gives our contact information at the end of the program. If you cannot stay till that very end, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org, and you can order the free sample packet there. Please do that today. With your Bible open to Romans chapter 2, beginning at verse 1, here's what the Bible says. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his, that is God's goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Stop, please, right there. Romans chapter 2 is a chapter with two halves. The first half is verses 1 to 16, and then the second half is verses 17 to 29. In each of these two sections, a kind of person comes into view. Now, back in chapter 1, in the second half of chapter 1, there was a person in view there. It was a pagan person. But now in chapter 2, verses 1 to 16, we are now looking at a morally upright person. When we get to the second half of chapter 2, we're going to look at a religious person, particularly a Jewish person. They're going to take center stage then. Now remember, the whole point of chapters 1, 2, and 3 of Romans is to show that all people everywhere are, are sinners. They are under God's wrath, and they do need God's salvation to escape this coming wrath of God. Now, here in verses 1 to 16, we look at the moral person, and we're going to find three facts about them. They are these. Notice three words beginning with the letter I. We're going to find out that they are inexcusable before God. They are impenitent before God. And by that, I mean that they refuse to see that they need to repent and they refuse to see they need a savior. And then finally, we're going to see that these moral people are inspected by God. Those three words, again, are my outline for verses 1 to 16. Inexcusable, impenitent, inspected. All right. Chapter 2 opens with that word, therefore. You can go and get some commentaries, and depending on which one you read, you're going to be led either to say that that therefore is going to turn your eyes back to verses 18 and 19 of chapter 1, or that commentary person will say that just look back to verse 32, the very last verse of chapter 1. Well, friend, I think the simple approach is the best one to take. Verse 32, the last verse of chapter 1, says that sinners are aware. They know that God's going to judge sin. They have a deep inner awareness that they will be judged severely for their sin. But, verse 32 says, they like sin, so they keep doing sin. And therefore, we come to chapter 2. Now, A kind of conversation begins here in chapter 2, and the Holy Spirit looks into the heart of that moral religious person, and he's going to see that these morally religious people agree with what God said in chapter 1. The moral man says, oh, yes, those pagan sinners are awful people. They do all those kinds of things that are listed there in chapter 1. Yes, they should die in their sin. They should be punished. They deserve the wrath of of God. The moral religious person agrees with God, but verses 1 through 4, this moral man, this religious person is inexcusable. Now, that word inexcusable in verse 1 means exactly what the literal word means. They have no excuse in God's sight, which will prevent themselves from experiencing God's wrath and God's judgment. Why? Well, four points are made here. In verses 1 through 4, one point for each verse. I'm going to use a series of words beginning with the letter C, like in the word carrot. I'm going to give one C word for each of the verses. For verse 1, the word is condemn. 
in verse 1, these moral people condemn themselves. Now, how do they condemn themselves? Well, they do so because all the while they condemn those openly wicked people talked about in chapter 1. These morally upright people are doing the same things. That's what verse 1 says. Oh, they may be not doing them outwardly. They may be trying to do them in secret and cover them up and so on. They're doing these sins privately or they're doing them inwardly in their heart. The bottom line is they're guilty of these sins. They are guilty before God. Verse 1, condemned. Verse 2, the word is caliber. Notice the caliber of justice they're going to face. It's going to be the same as for those in chapter 1. God judges sinners. He judges all sinners, whether they're pagan and irreligious or moral and very religious. All will be judged based upon God's truth. Verse 3, the word is confronted. These moral people are confronted personally. Let me read verse 3 for you again. It says this, And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? (laughs) That's a straight-up confrontation there. My word for verse 4 is the word confusing. These morally upright and religious people are confusing God's mercy. Verse 4 says that moral people despise or they view God's merciful patience in their lives as a signal that they're really not all that bad. They're confused about both what God's mercy is and they're confused about why God is showing mercy. Well, what is mercy? Well, mercy is God holding back the ugly consequences that we all deserve because of our sin. That's mercy. That's what it is. But why? Why does God show mercy to moral, religious people? He's showing them mercy so that they will repent of their sin. Oh, my. There's that ugly word, repent. The morally upright person does not like to hear preaching on repentance. In their minds, they don't need to repent because they see others who are far worse open sinners than they are, and those people need to repent, but not the moral person. Moral, religious sinners see all sin on a sliding scale. And guess who gets to control the scale? The moral person does. God, though, He judges all sins on his scale. His scale is unchangeable. His scale is truth. And guess what? He's the only one holy enough to be capable of determining truth from error. Friend, all sin will be judged by a holy, righteous God. You may think that you're not as bad a sinner as somebody else. It doesn't matter. Before God, you've fallen short of his standard, and you're guilty, and you need to repent of sin. You need to come to faith in Jesus Christ as Savior. Who is taking care of the sin debt in your life, in your heart? Are you by your moral actions? You're going to say, God, look at what I did. Yes, I did those sins, but they're not that bad. But look at all the morally upright things I did. Are you going to pay for your own sin? Or are you going to rely on Jesus and his shed blood to wash you clean of your sin? Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.